If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I advocate for the use of messaging or events in the context of microservices. Some of my colleagues have told me that it might seem I'm partial to events and a bit unfair to APIs. So I wanted to apologize for not being more direct. You have to stop using APIs to integrate microservices in your system. Capish? It turns out that operations in the real world are optimized through concurrent and asynchronous processing. You can see that in a factory line, as well as your favorite coffee shop. When we place an order, the cashier marks its details on a cup and places it in a queue, usually by the espresso machine. This queue of cups decouples the cashier from the barista and allows them to operate independently. The cashier can serve other clients without having to wait on the barista to complete previous orders. If the barista becomes overwhelmed, we can add another coffee station and deploy another barista. If we had to depict this interaction with the high-level system diagram, we would end up with a message-driven architecture. The interaction between the client and the cashier is synchronous. We want to collect the order details and clear the payment in the same transaction. However, the actual processing of the order is done asynchronously by the barista. As you can see, real-life optimization maps nicely to software architecture. Now the question is, why do we use asynchronous and concurrent processing to optimize operations? The ultimate goal of any business is to maximize profits. To do that, we need to increase revenue and minimize costs. The first interaction between client and cashier is critical to drive revenue. We want to be able to accept client's orders as quickly as possible. We want to maximize throughput. Having the cashier waiting on the barista to complete the order would cause the client's queue to grow too long. Some clients would eventually change their mind and decide to consume their coffee somewhere else. That's revenue loss. If we kept synchronous communication between the cashier and the barista, the only option to improve throughput is to deploy another cashier and barista at the same time. We would effectively double throughput, but also costs. This is very inefficient because the cashiers spend most of their time waiting. That's a poor utilization of resources. Asynchronous processing allows us to scale cashiers and barista independently, based on their throughput. A cashier would probably be enough to feed the queue of two or three baristas. We are now improving throughput while being cost efficient because we utilize resources to their full potential. Another big advantage of this approach is that the barista can take a short break without causing issues to clients. That's equivalent to dealing with offline microservices. The cashier and barista don't need to talk to each other because all the information to process the order is written on the cup. The queue of cups acts as a holding area where data is not lost. Once the barista is back online, it can start processing orders from where it left. Just imagine if we kept a client wait through the barista's break. I want to talk to your manager. A very common argument developers have against a message-driven architecture is that we have no guarantee that asynchronous operations succeed. For example, the barista might mess up the order. What do we do? We already charge the client's card. The answer is very simple. We compensate for the error. Compensation could be in the form of a refund to the client or by issuing a new order free of charge. This is also what happens in a distributed software system when we leverage the saga pattern. If we believe the error is irreversible, we counteract the actions we did, that's the refund. However, if we think the error is a transient condition, we can retry the operation. Whenever you use retries, make sure your processing units are important. 
in our scenario, we want the barista to be able to detect duplicate orders. If an order was served already, it shouldn't repeat it. I think by this time we should agree that there is no difference between the real world and software when it comes to optimizing efficiency and reliability. Still, this is the point where many engineers would tell me, but APIs are way easier to implement. Messaging is complex. APIs are not easier to implement. It's just an illusion. You are victim of hyperbolic discounting. You are focusing on immediate small rewards rather than the larger later rewards. If you are an architect, you are failing at your role. The reason why you see APIs easier to implement is that you are used to imperative programming. You assume that all it takes to decompose a monolith is to swap a local call with a remote API call to another microservice. If that's your conception of microservices, I would advise you to stick to monoliths, microliths or moduliths. You have to imagine that every time you go over the network, it's like visiting the most dangerous suburbs in the world. You never know if you make it out alive. Thus, you need to have valid reasons to split your code and introduce the risk of calls over the network. One common reason given is having teams owning different microservices. That's a good reason, but not good enough to justify alone microservices. If all you want is code ownership, you can modularize your code. If you are not capable of decomposing your monolith into well-defined modules, how can you be confident that you can create a sustainable microservices architecture? Another strong argument against APIs is that they introduce strong coupling between microservices. The client microservice needs to know the location and interface of the target microservice. Dependencies can be transitive and cyclic. Failures cascade aggressively and require retries and circuit breakers to be mitigated. In this diagram, service A is effectively dependent on B and all services behind it. Think about the resilience of A. I wouldn't bet much on it. The setup also leads to increased development costs. Imagine we are responsible for developing a microservice whose API is invoked by several other microservices. In this scenario, updating our API is extremely difficult because we might break our clients, even if we do our best to perform backward compatible changes. The chance of error is always there. Another option is to support multiple API versions. That's possible, but expensive. Don't forget our initial target. We want to maximize profits. Thus, any solution that increases costs is not a good one. A messaging architecture allows us to use advanced integration patterns where messages can be routed and transformed intelligently. Even in the chance of error, failures would not cascade in our system and data would be returned in the queues or event logs. Finally, event testing is way easier when components are decoupled. Rather than having to spawn mock services to perform your integration or end-to-end -end testing, you simply test against your inputs and outputs that are messages themselves. That's way easier. In conclusion, does that mean we should never use APIs? No. As we mentioned in other videos, APIs and synchronous interactions are necessary at the edges of our system when we interact with clients and their party systems. However, they can rarely win as the best approach in the context of intrasystem integration. Don't be fooled by these of the initial stages when you have just a couple of services running. You need to be able to look further and imagine a larger number of services tightly coupled. Don't even tell yourself that you start with APIs and then switch to events later on. That will never happen.
That said, architecture is about trade-offs. I'm pretty sure there are scenarios where messaging is not feasible, but I'd like you to tell me in the comment section. If you do, I'll move your argument in a future video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, especially with your colleagues, so that everyone can learn something new.